From the edges of the dimly lit halls, we could hear the din of cultists chanting surrounding their stone master. What we didn't expect was for the ruined figure to actually spring to life. Welcome to a brand new episode of Monster of the Week. Today we are talking about a lump of stone who would call itself a god, the Eidolon. This large humanoid figure is essentially a golem created by a group of usually cultists that's been etched with divine runes. They're created in some kind of ritual involving a religious group typically that takes a divine spark, which is a crystal of literal divine energy that they embed within the golem. Where things get tricky is sometimes in this ritual, the divine spark is actually corrupted and the Eidolon, when it comes to life, thinks itself to actually be a god. When this happens, things can get kind of messy, but we'll talk more about that in a moment. First off, we're going to cover what this thing can do in battle and what its abilities are like. Now, right off the bat, let's just mention this thing has two nasty slam attacks. Like every giant stone monster, it is physically capable of just crushing people. Now, what makes this unlike many other monsters, not just that I've covered, but just monsters in general, is it actually needs allies to be effective. Again, on its own, it can just pummel someone into the ground, sure, but for any of its abilities to really be that much more powerful, it wants to have a room full of followers. Its ability shine to their fullest extent in this kind of situation and I'll explain why by explaining the first ability that it has which is called hallowed stance so what is possibly this thing's most powerful move is it literally just sits down and meditates in a game I would describe it as simply sitting down raising its two hands in a meditative stance and the runes on its body begin to glow when it is in this stance it can do nothing it takes no actions and it can't move. If it does choose to move, it ends the Hallowed Stance ability. What this ability does though, is it gives the creature resistance to all damage. So that means any type of damage that targets the Eidolon while it's in its Hallowed Stance is going to be cut in half immediately. Now that said, I would also probably rule that it can't make dexterity saves in this situation, but that would ultimately be up to you as the book doesn't really say anything about that either way. Also, in addition to this, however, all of its allies that it can see gain an extra 1d8 on their damage rolls with any melee attack made, whether it's with a natural weapon or something like a long sword. This is really crazy because with just one or two allies, it's maybe not that good. But if you have a group of cultists surrounding this thing, they're all going to be doing an extra D8, which is crazy. Literally, the more allies it has around it, the more deadly this thing is. Its second ability is called Divine Retribution. Now, this power is actually a reactionary attack. Whenever the Eidolon is attacked by magic, arrows, melee attack, whatever it is, while in its hallowed stance, it can use its reaction to smite that target. It literally calls down a beam of divine energy that does a bunch of damage to anyone who dares strike it while it's in its hallowed stance. Not only is this gonna do damage, especially against a party that doesn't realize what they're up against at first, but once the attacker does realize what's going on, it's gonna dissuade future attacks. So then the party might think, well, we need to focus down its allies before we take care of it, and that's, kind of true. I only say kind of here because its next ability is called Vengeful Flames. And as you would expect with something with Vengeful in the name, it only triggers when one of its allies is killed. So when one of the cultists or whatever the situation is, one of the Eidolon's allies is killed, the person who killed that ally is then engulfed in flames. Rather than doing radiant damage, this does a fair amount of fire damage and there's also a chance that the target will actually catch on fire, continuing to take fire damage every round. So the Eidolon is essentially going to want to just sit there, meditate, and buff all of its allies until they've all been killed, if it gets to that point anyways. Only once it has no allies remaining will it rise up and start to try to pummel its opponents. Now this monster is already pretty awesome and I think it provides a very unique encounter that we don't often get with monsters being one of the commander who doesn't really attack actively anyways. I do think it would be nice for it to have one other ability though to do outside of its hallowed stance. I mean, it's already a pretty tough monster, so we don't want to add too, too much to it, but I kind of like the idea of the runes on its body being maybe something more than just flavor. What if through its touch, maybe just once per day, it was able to cast the bestow curse spell? As the spell actually indicates, there are many different effects that can come from this, but I just like the idea of the Eidolon grabbing one of its opponents and just watching one of the runes transfer off of its body onto the skin of whatever creature it's grappling with. For a straight up battle tactic, you could use this to impose disadvantage on attack rolls against 
the Eidolon or one of the other effects that's listed under the Bestow Curse spell. Any of these things will help the Eidolon in battle, and once it dies, the curse will just be lifted. However, if you wanted to go for something maybe a more plot-centric, you could have it be a curse cast at ninth level so it doesn't go away until it's dispelled. If you do this though, I wouldn't make it a crazy effect, but maybe something that just gives disadvantage on attack rolls against maybe followers of that Eidolon's god, or at least the god from which its divine spark was created from. If you do want to use it as a story device, that's ultimately up to you with how it's used. I mean, that's the nice thing about the Bestow Curse spell is it literally gives breathing room to come up with whatever you want as a disadvantage, just so long as it's not more powerful in regards to the other things that Bestow Curse can do. It could just be a neat bit of flavor. Maybe on the full moon, the rune that's stuck on this player's arm now starts to glow, or maybe it glows when the servants of whatever god we mentioned before happens to be nearby. But that aside, speaking of plot, let's talk about some of the ways you might actually use this creature in your game. If you don't want it to actually be a bad guy or something that the party has to fight, maybe it's simply the guardian of a church or some small religious community. Maybe there's a group of monks up in the mountains that worships Pelor, and in the center of their cloister they have an Eidolon construct who serves as a guardian. I actually really like the idea of an Eidolon being amongst mostly monks. Not that it necessarily has to be mechanics wise, but personally I just like the idea of its hallowed stance kind of looking like a giant monk meditating while all the other monks are going wild. By wild, of course, I mean taking three melee attacks per turn that all get an extra d8 added onto them. It just synergizes way too well. Which is really funny because that's not something they could have predicted back in 4th edition, but it works. The other thing to consider here is how the Eidolon was created. And I guess that goes for pretty much all constructs in general, but in this specific case, did it turn on its creators because the Divine Spark was corrupted? The book actually says the Eidolon will actively seek out followers if it doesn't already have some. So perhaps the Eidolon is found in the center of some ruined temple where its creators mistakenly brought it to life. After killing all of its creators, perhaps it started recruiting monstrous followers. Maybe it has a pack of gnolls or some goblins or maybe even some orcs that it's basically taken up as followers because they're just in awe of its insane power. The other option, which it actually says in the book as well, is that it won't always necessarily kill everyone, but it might just kill the creators in the room itself and then take over the cult as a whole that's responsible for bringing it to life. So it may very well be the cult of some evil god creates this thing, it comes to life, turns on some of the members, and then maybe they believe that the Eidolon is actually a manifestation of their god, so they start worshipping it, and the Eidolon is just fine with that. Like the gods, this thing seems to thrive off of worship, so that's kind of its end goal here. Well, so long as it's corrupted anyways. If everything goes smoothly, it should function just as a guardian aligned to that god. Speaking of allies though, the other option you do have here as well is sending it as an ally to the party, of course sent by the god of maybe one of the clerics in the party. I kind of mentioned this in my last video about angels as well, but if your cleric uses their divine intervention ability in battle and they look for deliverance of some kind, it's very possible that the god who they follow may send down an Eidolon to aid them. It'd be kind of cool for one of these creatures to just plummet from the heavens and just sit there and the party's like, wow, awesome, nice god you got there, cleric. You just sent us a giant boulder. But then they start to benefit from its abilities and start doing extra radiant damage, and that can often be enough to turn the tide of battle in their favor. I don't know, you can play that in a lot of different ways, but it's an interesting role for this creature to fall into. It can also work really well in a war situation if one of your religious characters finds a way to create these things. And they literally have Eidolons marching into battle amongst the legions of their allies. A lot of different ways you could take that, so just something to think about. Overall though, that is all I've got on the Eidolon today. Hopefully you found this video helpful. I've really been enjoying covering more 4th edition monsters lately since there are definitely some gems in there like I've said in the past. If you did find this video helpful though and you like what I do here and you want to support the channel please subscribe I have at least one new video every week and as of last week we've actually got a Patreon set up now so if you want to support the channel in that way I would definitely recommend checking that out. And of course we've got the discord server up now which has been going awesomely I've really been enjoying talking to you guys on there so if you're not already part of that please join us and as always thank you so much for watching I really appreciate it and I will see you next time.